Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me in reading Psalm 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called the house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join together in the song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him saying, Lord, help me. 
He answered, Is it not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs? She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God be our companion in life that we may not be the instrument of our own or of another person's oppression. Amen. I'd like to thank the rector, Chris Wendell, and the people of St. Paul's Bedford for allowing me to record this sermon for the diocese here in this beautiful place in Bedford. A reading from Isaiah 56. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love him, to be his servants, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Sunday Gospel readings for the past two weeks are about learning. We learn and the disciples learn who are with Jesus as these stories unfold. Indeed, the word disciple is a Greek word meaning student. We learn as students of Jesus's vision of God's reign. Two weeks ago in the Gospel, we heard of the story of the feeding of the multitude in which Jesus tells them to gather what they've already have, which is very little. And then he says to his disciples, you feed these people. In other words, do not focus on your limitations. There are untold resources for those who live into God's promises and trust God. And so with meager fish and loaves, a multitude was fed. Last week in Matthew 14, we hear of Jesus wanting to get away from the crowds, and he gets in a boat. He gets on the Sea of Galilee just to be alone. But a storm wells up, and it rages, and his disciples were filled with terror. They were afraid for Jesus, and Jesus walks on the water. He says to them, come, walk with me. Don't focus on your fears. Don't focus on your anxiety. Look to me, come to me, and you will survive all the storms of life. And now in today's gospel, we learn again. But this time, I think Jesus in the second half of the gospel is more in the posture of the student than the teacher. And the teacher is a bodacious foreign woman. In today's gospel, once again, Jesus had gone to a place to seek some rest, some quiet, some prayer, to get away from it all. But this time he goes into a foreign territory where he is less well known. He goes to Lebanon, but he encounters a woman who has heard of him before. In fact, as he is now an immigrant, seeking relief at this time in Lebanon, he can't get away from his own fame. And she, a foreign woman, a non-Jew, a Gentile, addresses him in Jewish terms. She calls him son of David, son of David. I think we can learn a good deal about this woman from this short reading, but also we can learn a great deal from this woman. She is a woman who loves her daughter, who is ailing, who is sick, and she will go at any length to bring about healing for her daughter, even to speak to this Jewish teacher. 
She is a woman who is willing to take a risk, a big risk, crossing cultural, gender, and religious boundaries to even speak to a man of another race. It was a taboo for women. But she initiated her approach to Jesus. She is a woman who is once committed to a task, does not give up easily. She asks, she begs, she calls to him three times. And Jesus' disciples try to push her away. But she will not give up. And the last thing we know about her is that she is a woman who is in, in her culture, and sometimes still in this world, seen as subservient, inferior, not an equal, but rather an object. But we know that she is a woman with a quick wit and some sense of humor. For you see, in their interchange, Jesus was at first very gruff with her. He says to her after she begs healing for her daughter, I am not here for your people. And he makes the analogy about taking food away from children, that is, the Jewish people, and not giving them to dogs, her people. But she was able to come back with a playful response, saying, yes, but, you know, even dogs eat crumbs that fall from the table. I can capture the twinkle in the eye of both Jesus and this woman as they have this interchange. And from it, Jesus is in the posture of learning not only about himself, but about this woman about the heritage that he does carry around. And he immediately allies himself with the vision of the prophet Isaiah. For you see, Jesus' people, Israel, had had a tradition of exclusion and hostility to all that was foreign. But he hears within himself Isaiah, who represents an emerging voice of his time. Isaiah, though eight centuries previous, tells us that God cares nothing about race, national or ethnic identity, about citizenship or boundaries or labels or zip codes. God's reign of love is for all people. It embraces all of humanity. And God is building a house of prayer for all people among the people. Through history, we have had a hard time learning this lesson that God's love is for all people. We've had a hard time learning this lesson as we see what's going on, not only in our national history, but in this present moment. We are conscious today of the divisive nature of race, political skip, skip spin, and religion. All are being used to deny access to basic human rights and needs, such as education and health care, especially during this pandemic. But throughout history, God has given us some bodacious women who refuse to submit to divisive, spiteful, and even violent uses of words, religion, or the bigoted governmental and political powers that be. Two of these bodacious, bodacious women come to my mind and they're from the 19th century. And I think of them as we come in two days, on August 18th, to the 100th anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment, allowing women to vote in this country. The first one is Sojourner Truth, a black woman like me, but she escaped slavery. She was proud, she was strong, she knew she was God's own child. She was a witness to justice, justice for all God's children. And she said at one time about women's suffrage and about women uniting to end slavery, she said, if the first woman God ever made Eve, was made strong enough to turn the world upside down all alone, these women together ought to be able to turn it back and get it right side up again. And now they are asking to do it. And the men better let them. 
The second woman that's come to my mind late, lately has been Jane Addams, the founder of the Settlement House Movement in my hometown of Chicago. She worked to create a sense of community among the most desperate classes of industrial Chicago. And she said, the things that make men alike are finer and better than the things that keep them apart. That these basic likenesses, if they are properly accentuated, easily transcend the less essential differences of race, language, creed, and tradition. Jane was bodacious. Sojourner was bodacious, just as this woman of Lebanon was bodacious. Today, we need more bodacious women to speak to those who are bent on using fear and division in our country and in this world. We need them to speak to those who give us lies and misinformation rather than compassion and truth. We need them to speak up if we're ever going to address fully this pandemic that is raging in our country and the injustice to people of color. We should listen to bodacious women who speak God's truth as found in Isaiah. And we should not be afraid to assert ourselves that walls are not the way to build security. Prejudice is not the way to build a national identity. Denial is not a way to heal the racism and oppression in this land. Misinformation does not lessen the power of the COVID pandemic. The way to build a secure life, a secure nation, a secure world is to do justice and to practice mercy to serve all of God's children equally, no matter what their gender, sexuality, race, color, creed, or national origin. We need more women like this bodacious woman of Lebanon, who reminds us that God's love and healing power will not be confined to one race, one region, one nation. It's ironic that this woman is sort of an earlier voice of her sister Palestinian women who grieve the loss of their children in their homes. She's an earlier voice of the Latinas on our southern border, se border separated from their children. She is an earlier voice of black women across this nation for, for 400 years. They've been be crying the cruelties of bigotry. Mothers, wives, sisters, and daughters. She was a voice of those who are losing their loved ones to COVID. We need more bodacious women who will speak up, not give up, who are committed, who will show compassion, who will help us learn how to respect the dignity and integrity of all people if we're ever going to find our basic humanity in the likeness that we have. But we also need more than a few good men to help turn the leadership of this country from self-righteousness and vindictiveness and arrogance to show the real strength, the real might of our values as Christians and as Americans in the principles of our declaration and our constitution and in the ethics of our Bible, of our faith. We need to be bodacious for God's justice and compassion, truth and mercy, if we're ever to pursue that which the Declaration of Independence has said over and over again, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And we also need the youth to be bodacious to us. We need to listen to them who may have a vision that is much more powerful than anything we've already lived in that the normal of the past cannot be the normal of the future. We must join with bodacious women who call on our leaders for justice. We must join with bodacious women, all women who worship the God of Abraham, our brothers and our sisters, our Muslim, Jew, and Christian brothers and sisters, and offer more than crumbs. We must end the table of exclusion and open our hearts 
open our doors, open our political system to the truth and justice of God. We must respond to the gospel that echoes the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples, for all peoples, for all peoples. To God be the glory, dominion, and power forever and ever. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. Amen. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, 
for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect for the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please join me in praying to God for healing and comfort, mercy, and a renewed commitment to follow Jesus, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. O God of compassion, giver of life and health, we pray your healing mercies upon all people, the sick and those who care for them, the grieving and all who comfort them in their sorrows. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for courage and wisdom for our leaders and for our church as we discern our individual role and our community's call to heal the divisions which infect our country. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask Heavenly Father that we be guided by your spirit of love and by our baptismal promises to respect the dignity of every human being and of all your creation. Help us witness to your purpose with renewed integrity. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those children and families who are preparing for the school year to begin. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those on our parish prayer list, Edith, Susie and Ellie, Edie, Barbara, Aurelie, Matthew, Colby, Jean, Jane, Sandra, Daniela, Michael, Mart, Scott, Charlie, Nigel, Christine, Ryan and Kim, Linda and John, Shannon, Lydia, Bill, Paul, Ellen, Will, Peter, Nancy, Marjorie, Robert, Audrey, Doug, Susan, Mary Sue and Charles, Isabel, Christina, Sergio, Tom, Joan, Caroline, Margo, Jenna, James, Betty Ann, Barbara, Sue, Justin, Jim, Rick, Carol and John, Christopher and Heidi, Peter, Marie and William, the Connor family, baby Sarah, baby Ben, Paul, Anne, David, and all those you name now. And we pray for those who have died, especially Ruth P. Jones, Thomas V. Neild, Teresa B. Miller, James O. Garrison, and those you name now. May they rest in the joys of heaven in God's loving embrace. Lord, hear our prayer. Mercifully accept these our prayers, O God of all comfort and our only help in time of need. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It is such a pleasure to be gathered here, albeit virtually, um, with all of you this morning. A few announcements. First, I'd like to thank Bishop Harris for her preaching and her sermon this morning. We are grateful for her words. 
please join us for coffee hour immediately following the service on Zoom. We have two weekday services. On Tuesday evenings at 7.30, we have Compline, and then Wednesdays at noon, we have Noonday Prayer. We have just started live streaming both of these services on Facebook, so you can join us on Facebook or you can join us on Zoom. Reverend Nancy continues to offer porch prayers and chapel chats. Please email her to schedule one of those. And I am continuing to have open office hours on Wednesday mornings from 9.30 to 11.30. Uh, the link is in the window. Please feel free to swing by. If that time doesn't work for you, reach out and we can schedule another time. I'd love to have the opportunity to get to know you a little bit better. Together, let us express our gratitude to God. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Live without fear. Your Creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road, and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Mm -hmm.